Hi guys, it's Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Art. I'm here this morning to teach you how to paint a tree that looks like Belique pottery. This is the Belique pottery. You might recognize it. A lot of you might also know that I own the Tinker's Cart, which is an Irish import store uh, in the Worcester Public Market. We sell lots of Belique and have lots of requests for Belique vases and dishware and teapots and all that. So one of um, my customers who bought a tree wants to paint it to look like her Belique collection. So I'm going to show you that demo this morning real quick and you can see if you like the way it looks. You might want to paint one of your trees like that. So I've got the small Christmas tree here. We've been selling lots of trees. I've been delivering lots of trees. People seem to um, love the, the vintage uh, trees to have them back in their homes for Christmas. And you might have seen my other video on the green Christmas tree and then some of the colors. But this is just going to be one quick one to show you how to get that Belique look if you would like. So I'm starting with the tree. I'm going to paint the tree in the base the same. I'm going to start with an undercoat of an ivory paint. So I've got, this is a deco art. You can use any brand. It's just an ivory or an off-white. You've heard me talk about these chip brushes that I love so much that are super duper cheap. And you can get them at the dollar store or Michaels or... Home Depot, and I'm going to just um, quickly do a coat of this ivory color over my entire tree. I'm gonna cover the base as well. The chip brushes um, are a little bristly and they have some body to them, so it makes it perfect to get into the little creases and things. I'm gonna move this camera so you can get a better idea of what I'm painting. And there. So quick coat of this, pretty easy. You don't have to be too careful. It's a white tree and the ivory is about the same color. You might miss a few spots. You'll notice that after the paint dries, but it's not really a big deal. This is just gonna be a, a base coat. We're gonna let this dry and we're gonna do the same thing on a little bit of a dry brush technique with white over it. Very similar to we, what we did with the green tree. We did the dark coat underneath and then a very light green in different shades above it. And I and I think the pottery has a little bit, it's not pure white. So I think doing the ivory undercoating with the white on top is gonna give it the look we're looking for. And then I'll show you a little technique to paint the shamrocks on, which is pretty easy. You can almost do it in three strokes. And it makes a nice, um, something a little different especially if you collect the Belique pottery or you know someone who does and you wanna give them a very unique and special gift, this would be ideal. This is the little tree. I think it stands about 11 or 12 inches tall when it's on the base. We've been selling these for 55. Comes with the lights and the light kit and the star, which I will show you after we paint it. We can uh, put some of the lights in. I think I'm gonna stick with green, maybe green and clear lights for this one. So we're just going to do, it doesn't take long. You just want to get in your little nooks and crannies there with your ivory. And you can paint the bottom. I always like to finish off the pieces and seal them up on the bottom. I'm using just acrylic paint here. Just a little two ounce or um, eight ounce bottles. You can find them at the craft stores or Joann's, Michael's, Hobby Lobby. You can order them online. I know right now paints are, are a little hard to come by, it seems, at Michael's. I found a good selection at uh, Joann's though. So if you have any trouble finding paint, give me a buzz, send me a message. I can give you some ideas of what to do and where to go, or I can even make up a kit for you of paint and brushes if you need them. I'm only using three colors really on this. I've got the ivory. I got some white here. I have pulled out a few shades of green. I like to um, just pull different greens in my brush when I'm making my shamrocks. And I'll show you that technique when we get to that. You can certainly use one shade if you have it. If you want a shade of green and then something a little lighter, just mix some of your green with some yellow and you'll get that nice um, lime green color there. So getting my base coat on here. And, and the tree pictures have been coming in. People have been painting their trees, all sorts of different, uh, different techniques. I have posted the beech tree that one of my customers painted, it's really cute. She did a beech theme. She did a teal tree with a little um, starfish for the, for the top. Sand on the, on the base, kind of a sand technique, which was kind of nice. So um, there's all sorts of ways you could paint them. It doesn't have to be the traditional green. 
I'm gonna let this dry for a minute, then I'm gonna put on the white coat. I do keep my brushes in the water in between painting. Um, the paint does dry pretty quickly on them while you're uh, waiting for something to dry or you're switching to a different color. Do rinse off your brush. It will save them and you will have them for a long time that way. We have been selling all kinds of Christmas trees. Um, I know some of you might have seen the video with the truck and tree. That has gone on, gone crazy. People love it. They're buying four and five and having little parties, paint parties together, which is nice. I wonder... Um, I can't wait to see the pictures of those when they're when they're ready. So I'm going to just give this a second and then I'm going to brush over it with the white and we're going to see what that looks like. And if it's not quite light enough, we can let it dry and do a second coat because we are going to try to get this kind of look that you see on the bleak. So I'm going to take a little of that white now. I'm not taking a lot of paint. I'm not dipping my brush in and getting a big, big glob of paint. I pull it to the side. I want small amounts of paint to start. I would rather have it a little too light and have to do a second coat than really glob it on and have it go into the little creases. Because these trees are so detailed, it makes it perfect for a dry brush technique, which is basically a little brush, paint on your brush like I showed you, and just hitting the tops of the, of the top of the piece. I'm not jamming it in and trying to get it into the creases and the crevices because we want that to have a little bit of that ivory showing through. Sometimes the quicker you do it, the better. Then you're not being too particular and too fussy. So we're just going to go over. And you can see how that's really lightening up um, the piece now. I know it's a little shadowy, but um, I think you can see and get the idea. So I'm, I'm just hitting the tips of the branches and kind of working my way around. The little tree is kind of a nice one to work on because it's so easy. The big one, which is a big, huge, massive, like 18 or 19 inch, is a little um, awkward. And actually, I'm going to keep my eye open like for a Lazy Susan or something to sit that on. And then I could just spin it around and paint it because it certainly would be beautiful if you did the big tree as a belief technique as well. And I am working pretty quickly. So the paint is wet, but I'm just going to be a little careful. And I don't care about paint on my hands because they're always like that. I have some new pieces. I don't know if you saw my little sneak peek of the uh, Christmas tree gnome last night. He is adorable. He is about 13 inches tall. He's a gnome face with a big tree on his head and the lights and the star and the whole bit. So I will pull one of him out, hit one of those pieces out and paint that up for you too. I think it's easier if you see the pieces being painted uh, and what they look like afterwards. So I'm gonna do a quick coat the same way on the base. The base does not have that detail and crevices, but that's okay. Just do a light coat. I'm gonna kind of go with the direction right around the base. This will be a good spot to really show you that uh, shamrock painting technique too. So, so easy peasy. That is just a coat of the ivory, dry brushed lightly with the white paint. I love these chip brushes. I change them for each color because I want a nice dry brush when I start. I don't want to um, have any water dripping out because that would just run and not make a nice finish for you. So there we are, that's how easy it is to begin. You've got that and that. While that dries for a second, I'm going to show you what I use to do the, sh the little shamrocks. I like a really small flat brush. This is probably a two. I'm gonna move this aside and kind of just show you on this palette. I take, I'm gonna push, pull, I'm gonna pull you in here so you can kind of see it a little closer. There, I'm, I take a little bit of paint on my brush most all the time when I'm painting anything, I do not go right into the paint and grab a big glob. I take a little to the side. I want to control what I'm using. I've filled the brush with green paint. I've not filled it way up to here. It's just a little on the end. You don't want to get your paint up in the ferrule of the brush, really. It will harden up there, and then your bristles will break off, and your brushes will not last. So be a little careful with them. Pull just a little green aside. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just take my brush and let me get to, so you can kind of see. I just do a little press, pull, press, pull, press, pull, and a little stem. And there you've got a little shamrock. It might take a little practice. It's a little bit of a brush stroke technique. Um, as we go along, I'll show you some others um, in other videos because there's some really cool ways you could quickly paint flowers and leaves and things just with one stroke. I am just, press my brush, Pull it up. It turns into that little shape. Teardrop. I make flowers this way, just going all around and pulling the petals from the outside in. You may have to reload your brush a little bit each time, but usually I get one whole shamrock out of one brush load of paint. 
I'm pressing and pulling in, pressing and pulling in. And to make the stem, I use the brush on the chisel edge. It's press and just pull and you get a little stem. You can, this is a wider brush. Look, you can get a nice wide stroke. You can get a very thin stroke using it on the chisel edge too. So just practice on a little piece of styrofoam or paper plate um, to get going. And what I, why I have some other colors out is sometimes I like to load up with the main color, dip the corner maybe in something lighter. And then when I make my shamrock, it has some shading in it and some highlights. If you want to get fancy, you can use your middle green, take a little dark one side, a little light on one side. You could see how the brush is loaded with three colors there. And I just press and pull, press and pull, press and pull, make a little tail. Pretty easy. You would not find it that easy if you had the round brush. The, the square brush, the little square brush is what really makes this work. So you're just making little shamrock shapes. Okay, so let me grab the tree. Now the belief pottery lots of times has the shamrocks in a little bouquet. Sometimes they're single on different pieces. So I'm gonna just do a little of each. I'm just eyeballing it. I do not think you have to worry about sketching or planning. I'm just gonna eyeball it. The only thing I'm thinking about on this though is perhaps with the detail in the tree, I'm wondering how smooth my shamrocks are gonna come out because this is brand new to me too. I'm just gonna give it a go. And I'm just gonna hold the piece however it's comfortable for you. Press and pull, press and pull, press and pull, a little tail. There we have a little shamrock on our tree. That's looking a little bleaky. So I'm gonna do this one as a little bouquet. And then I'm just going to scatter them here and there, willy-nilly as I feel like it. And, and actually so far, the texture of the tree has not interfered at all. I'm gonna scooch a little closer to you here so maybe you can see it a little better. And sometimes you can do just the green. You don't have to always do all those colors, but I did notice when I was looking at my Balik pottery this morning that it does have some lights and darks. You can see we've got a little more of a blue green here, the lime green. The stems seem to be pretty much lime green. I'm not gonna worry so much about that, but maybe I'll try a few. Those stems that I were a little um, thinner than what I'm doing, so. Okay, sometimes I'm gonna just do one. That's a little bit lighter, but I like the idea of them being different shades. And once you get going with this technique, you can really go to town. And remember, no one is going to be looking at it like this. They're gonna be looking at it from afar. Do not fuss about all your little strokes. They're not going to be perfect. They're not gonna all look alike. Mine are not perfect. Mine are not all going to look alike. Just have fun with it. The main reason we're doing this is to have fun, right? And then people will be loving their little Balik trees that you gift them for Christmas. And you'll have a great time painting them. I talked about it last time, but I think what's really fun and what I'm doing a lot is family groups are getting together. Maybe the, maybe the weekend after Christmas, uh, Christmas, that's coming too fast. The weekend after Thanksgiving, lots of uh, family parties. Some of them are going to do it by Zoom because they will not be together on the holidays, sadly, with the crazy year we're having. But it's a memory nonetheless, and it would be nice to put your name and date you painted on the bottom. And you can have a little memory of this year that we're hoping to put behind us and move forward. And I'm pretty optimistic that everything will work out. But it helps when we're all inside and, and as the winter comes along and we may be in more to have some craft projects and art projects to work on. So if you've followed me on my Facebook page, the Tinker, uh, Tinker's Cart Art, you will see that I'm doing some art kits um, for kids, but I think they appeal to everyone. Right now I'm doing some wood cutouts that are cool because the design that you see on them is sort of etched in very slightly. So when you're painting them, your brush kind of stays in the line, sort of. So that would be great for the little ones. They won't get so frustrated. Uh, I'm also uh, doing some little canvases. So I'm gonna take some canvases and canvas boards. I will sketch the designs on for you and include all the paint you need. All of the kits come with a QR code that will connect you to the video instructions, which is nice. All of the pieces that you buy the ceramics now, I am putting a label on the box with the QR code to the instructions. So if you're interested in a bleak tree, just tell me that you want to do the Balik method and I will include that QR code 
code with your tree. The trees come with the lights and the little light kit and the star and all that. I you really don't need much of a paint on this one, but if you do need help with paint, let me know and I can make up an art kit for a paint kit for you as well. I think you can see how I'm doing these. I'm trying to get close enough, but uh, I think you can kind of see. I am not thinking about it. I am not saying, okay, I'm going to do one here. Now I'm going to do two. Just wing it. Just do it. Have fun. Look at they make little mistakes are made. Just fix them if you want to. A little tip. If you do something that you don't like, right away, just go with like a bristly brush, maybe a thicker brush, well, clear, clean water. You can wipe it right off. You can use a baby wipe. Those work like magic. You can wipe off any little mistakes while it's wet with a baby wipe. So speaking of things you might need when you're painting, you don't need a lot of fancy things. I use a paper plate or a little uh, styrofoam palette. These brushes are not really fancy. This is one that came in a kit of like 10 brushes for $10. There, you don't, if you take care of them, you can get a little bit of use out of the inexpensive brushes too. If you were doing fine, uh, work like when I do my watercolor painting and my other sorts of painting I really need nice fine good sable brushes but for the ceramics they're they're hard on the brush they're rough so I would use I would use something inexpensive you've got your paints like I said you can find them at the craft shops you might have some at home these are really basic colors and I just like to spray it after I'm not going to do it here because I really want to do it outside but you can give it a nice shiny spray uh, finish with this uh, Mod Podge Super High Shine Spray. doesn't have to be Mod Podge. Whatever you find at the craft store, it could be the Aileen's, it could be different brands. Uh, Krylon has one probably, and it's just the high gloss finish. Now, that's if you want the, a shiny finish like the Belique, like a glazed piece. These are not glazed, but you could get that look with that spray. But you might prefer a pearl or a satin finish, which you can find all those in the craft shop as well. If you um are, are, you know, if you don't want to use a spray for some reason, there are brush on finishes. Modge Podge makes one. Aileen's makes one. Just look for a brush on high gloss finish. It will go on a little milky looking and foggy, but it dries clear. So there's no worries there. I just happen to have the spray. I, I like the way the spray works. So that's what I'm going to use. After this dries thoroughly, I'll just bring it outside in the fresh air and give it a sprayer maybe two coats I, I will let it dry very very you know really well in between and look at this we've got this i think this looks pretty good so you don't want too too many because it's not an all over thing I, i'm looking at this now and i like i have one 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 so i want to kind of make it a little more random so i'll just put two there and another one here and i think that's good for my tree i'm gonna let that go and now you can really see how I do those shamrocks on this base because you'll get, it's, it's not so um, involved with all those little details. Here we got this nice smooth base. I'm going to start in the middle. So here's the little spot where the cord goes through. So right in the front, I'm going to do a nice little bouquet of these little, um, try to do it so that you can see it well. Press, and press, press, and a little step. So I press and pull, press. Can you see the colors, how I'm varying it? You can get some darks and lights. Some can be just lights. I randomly just put my brush into those colors and I'm getting some cool effects. So I've got a little group of three. Maybe I'll go over here and do two. If you prefer, you could always go and make, you know, write a little something on here. You could write the, your name, the name of the people you're giving it to. You could do Merry, Happy Christmas, Merry Christmas, a date. That would be really a nice little keepsake for someone. If you're uncomfortable with just freehand painting on your saying or your words, you can certainly just take a piece of, um, print out, go to one of your uh, word processing documents, Word or Pages or whatnot, type out what you want with the font you like, print it out, and then if you just rub on the back of that with a pencil, you have a little graphite on there, you can transfer it on to something. So try that if you're, if you're afraid to kind of go right on in freehand. You can always trace it on. It is not cheating. It is just helping. Okay, so there we are. I think that looks good. Can you see? Let's put the little tree on here. It's going to be shiny when we when we finish. And there you have your little bleak tree. I'm going to stick with, I think, the green lights, the green and white. Uh, it has the little star for the top. 
to the pensini. And then you will put your little lights in. And the multicolored would not be a bad thing either. So you could do either. So you're going to put those little lights in. Some people like to glue them in. That's fine. Then you don't have to worry about them falling out. And every Christmas when you bring it out, you don't have to be fighting with the lights. I'm just setting them in here to show you because I will take them out to spray. And the light kit. Oh, this is what the light kit looks like. It's pretty easy. It's got the bulb in here and everything. You will just insert the little metal piece with the light bulb here. The cord runs through. It has a switch so you don't have to unplug and plug it. And there you are off. So anyway, I wanted you to see the Balik tree. I will post pictures of the finished product on the page. And like I said in the beginning, I'm not sure I'm, I'm going to maybe share this on both my business pages because I'm not positive that everybody in Tinker's Cart knows I do Tinker's Cart art. And I don't know if everyone in the art site knows that I have the Irish shop. So if you're looking for some real Balik pieces, I carry those. We can You can find them on my website, tinkerscart.com. For the art site, you'll find me on Facebook at Tinker's Cart Art. You can send me a private message if you would like to be on my email list because then you kind of get notification of when I'm going to do certain events, new pieces that are coming along, and you'll just keep up to date with all the crazy things that I do. So I'm going to sign off. I appreciate you watching. Throw any questions or comments in. I will answer them when this posts. Send me a direct message if you would like. And any questions, if you'd like to order a tree, I'll put the link in the description of the video, but feel free just to contact me. If you're local, I'll drop it off for you. If you'd like, I could meet you somewhere, if that's more comfortable for you, or I can ship it to your home. So I, the, the little trees like this are 55. We have a middle size that's 65, and the big, huge trees, the ginormous ones, are 95. And I'll put more information out, and you'll find it. If you scroll back on Facebook, you'll see the trees that um, are being offered. And look for the gnome Christmas tree video. I'll do that soon. Thank you guys. Bye.